Right now, you're hearing about your true nationality and how you repent according to the Bible. All right, we're going to show you how you get the kingdom of heaven as well. So now with that being said, let's go to the book of Numbers chapter 1 verse 18 because Sister Toya says we're all mixed, right? So I'm going to show you something. Say it again. Yeah. All right, I'm going to show you out of the Bible. There's no such thing as being mixed according to the scriptures. We're going to show you that. God say don't breathe with them. But all right, all right, we're going to show you something. The book of Numbers chapter 1 verse 18. Uh-huh. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigree. So they declared their pedigrees, all right? Talking about their lineage, their bloodline, where they came from. Go ahead. After the families uh -huh. by the house of their father. So it says they declared their pedigrees by their fathers. So we know our nationality or our lineage, our race, our ethnicity by our fathers. So Sister Toya, what's your father? What, was his na what would be his nationality? No, your father, not not the heavenly father, your biological father. What's his nationality? It says Indian. Okay, Romans chapter eight, verse sixteen. All right, all right, because a lot of us we don't know uh, a nationality of our fathers. We can only go back so far. All right, but this is what the Bible says. If you bear witness with the things that was written in the Bible about your people, then you are an Israelite according to the Bible. And that's all that matters. And I'm going to show you why that's important. Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 16. Uh -huh. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit uh -huh. that we are the ch children of God. So if you bear witness with the things that happened to your people in history about the slave ships, did they come over here in slavery? Right, so if you bear witness with that, which is written in the Bible, then that means that you are a child of Israel, all right? That's your true nationality. So now, let's go to the book of Revelation 21. All right, I'm gonna show you something because we mentioned why is that so important? Why is it important to know our true nationality, all right? Because when you actually read the Bible, you'll understand that the Bible was only written to God's chosen people, the Israelites. The Most High God is only dealing with those people. Yes, ma'am. I know a lot of our people don't we understand that but you know what we're not out here for everybody we are here for the people who do care all right and sister Toya it seemed like you care do you care about your salvation you care about do you want to go to heaven you care about where you come from all praises so we're going to show you your biblical history all right so now read that Revelation 21 verse 12 and let's see why it's important to understand why we are the Israelites according to the Bible read that the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 12 uh -huh. and had a wall great and high so it's talking about the kingdom of heaven it has a wall great and high you want to get to the kingdom right exactly. you want to right exactly all right go ahead and it had 12 gates it had how many gates 12 gates so the kingdom of heaven sister toya has 12 gates 12 gates all right go ahead and at the gate 12 angels uh -huh. and and names written their own uh -huh. which are the name of the 12 tribes 
of the children of Israel. All right, so the names on the 12 gates are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So you got Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, Zebulon, Gad, Reuben, Asher, Issachar, and Naphtali. We descend from each one of those sons, all right? So we come from those tribes. So that means that, Sister Toya, so that means that the kingdom of heaven is only for who? Is it for everybody? No, it can't be right because it's only got 12 gates with 12 names on it. Well, so that means that the kingdom of heaven is for you. Isaac and, uh -huh. um, Isaac and, um, Revelation 22, 14. Oh, Lord. Isaac and, oh, Lord. Isaac. Isaac and Jacob, right? What about him? Esau. That's Esau. Esau and Jacob. And then he was holding, um, Jacob to the he didn't steal it. It was a future prophecy. No, it was already promised to him well, from the beginning. But that was ordained from the beginning. But we can go into that. But what's what's important? So now, remember, the kingdom of heaven is only for the Israelites, right? Um, hold that. Get Acts chapter one and verse six, I believe. That's right. I Acts chapter one, verse six. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Sister Toya. So I got a question. So if the kingdom of heaven is for the Israelites, how do we get there? Do we get it automatically because we the children of Israel? Well, no, we have to obey. The, have to obey, right? Uh, God, um, and then we actually are. Uh, I mean, um, right. Okay. So we have to obey God. How do we obey God, Sister Toya? Um, no fornication. No fornication, right? Uh, right. Well, actually, we just have to. Abide by, abide by the rules of God. You're absolutely correct. That's keeping God's commandments, all right? So now we're going to read one more thing, and then we're going to show you that. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. When they, 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 when they, when they, they, therefore, will come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, when, when will thou, ah, uh, the time we store the kingdom again to Israel. So the disciples asked Christ, when, is it, is it, they asked him, is this the time period that you're going to restore the kingdom back to Israel? So what is that telling you? That means that the kingdom of heaven has always only been about the children of Israel. All right. That's exactly what it's saying. So now, yes, ma'am. Hold on for a second. You said that the way we get to the kingdom is by abiding God's rules, right? You're absolutely correct. So now we're going to get some of God's rules. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22. 22 verse 5. I'm going to get you some of the rules that God made for you. We disobeyed God. Yes, we did disobey God. That's why we're in the situation we are in right now. But now, how do we get back on God's um, good terms and God's good gracious? How do we do that? God say, keep, keep his commandments. Right. So now we're going to, Sister Toya, we're going to show you. So now you said fornication, right? What are some other commandments that you're supposed to keep as an Israelite sister? All right, I'm going to show you. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. You hear that? It says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. You know what that's talking about, Sister Toya? What it's talking about? Pants. Pants. Exactly. You know that. So now read that one more time. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So it says a man not supposed to wear a woman's garment either because uh -huh. nowadays um, men wearing skirts, men wearing dresses is a fashion. You see the pictures with Young Jock, you see the celebrities, Chris Brown, you see uh, P. Diddy, everybody's doing it, right? Right. But the Most High God says the fashion of this world is going to pass away. So it says a woman not supposed to wear which pertain to a man. Why not? Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Because the laws of God actually are spiritual, all right? So if you're not keeping God's commandments, there's a negative effect behind that thing. And we're going to show you. This is why it's important for you to put on a dress or a skirt. Oh. Sister Toya, you understand that? You say, what? You said, no. Ah, look, look, now we got a problem. Remember, you're supposed to abide by the rules of God. You remember you said that? All right, look, hold on. Go ahead, read that. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Uh -huh. Wherefore, the law is holy. It says the law is holy. All right, go ahead. And the commandments holy uh -huh, go ahead. and just and good. Verse 14. Verse 14. Uh -huh. For we know that the law is, is, is spiritual. So it says the laws are holy. They just and good. 
and the laws are spiritual. So that means that if you're not keeping God's commandments, if you're breaking God's laws, it puts an evil spirit on you. So if you got those men pants on, what you think the spirit is going to be on you? You're going to have a manly spirit. Say it again. They said they're girl pants. There's not a such thing as girl pants. Exodus chapter. You said say it again. Hey, sister Toya, where are you going? Look, sis, look. You think that we bashing you right now, but we well, actually what we're doing is showing you love according to the Bible. If we didn't love you, we would let you go down the street with those same pants that you got on right now. But since we love you, we're going to tell you to do better. Because if you don't change, what's going to happen? If you continue to wear pants till Christ's return, what's going to happen in the end? Do you know? Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. I'm going to show you. Because a lot of our people think that wearing pants, that ain't a big deal, right? That's something small to the Most High God. But he says that if you break any of these least commandments, you're not going to enter into the kingdom. And you said you want to get to the kingdom, though, He's right? This would not get me into the kingdom. That's not going to get you into the kingdom, and we're going to prove that. And so I got to have, I actually have to have uh, a dress. You do, because that's the biblical wear of the Israelite women, all right? The black, Hispanic, and Native American women are not supposed to wear pants. See, you know that's what? a manly attire. That that's be, man's attire. We're going to show you. Zephaniah 1 and 8. It's an easy thing. Right. It's not that hard. All right? Because I'm going to ask you a question. Why does your, your pants have a zipper in front of it? What's the reason? The zipper of your pants. So what's the reason for a man having a zipper on their pants? What do we use the zipper for? See, you're smiling because you know. You know. So now, sister, let's be real. The man has a zipper on his pants because he's pulling something out. What does the woman have to pull out? Exactly, you have nothing, right? So that's exactly why pants are for men and not for women. When you go to the bathroom and you look at the two signs, right? Men and women. What does the woman's sign have? What kind of, what does she wear? That's what the Most High God says. We didn't say that. That's what a woman is a princess of God is supposed to wear according to the Bible. All right, read that. Zephaniah 1 and 8. I'm going to show you. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. It's not our words. Right? And, it, and it shall come to pass uh -huh. in the day of the Lord's sacrifice uh -huh. that I will punish the prince and the king's children uh -huh. and all such I wear our clothing with strings of power. So the Most High, he says it right here in the Bible that when he comes back in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that's when he comes back to destroy our enemies and all of the children of Israel that's not keeping God's commandments. Shalom, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.